hello and welcome to the channel. I'm just heading out to the garden tonight to give it a watering and I thought this would be a good time just to walk you through while I'm watering you, giving you a little tour of how everything's doing. And I also have a lot of questions. I have a few things growing or not doing well, uh, some new things that I've never grown before. So I have some questions for my viewers and I'm hoping you guys will help me out uh, by leaving some comments and uh, helping me with my questions. So let's go for a walk. So this is my two raised garden beds that I've had going and I have switched out to all containers, also known as my rednecked raised garden bed. So these are 30 gallon mineral tubs that we have from our cattle that I've uh, filled up with a lot of materials and some good potting soil and now have a lot of great things growing in here. Henderson's out here in the garden with me. He's always helping me out with the watering. So we're gonna start on this side here where I have my peppers and eggplants. So I'm pretty excited because I have a really good crop of sweet Italian peppers coming here. So you can see I have two plants, lots growing. And I've been just kind of pinching off any new blooms that are coming. I want them to kind of focus on the existing fruit here now and not try to get any more going. These are my paprika peppers, I believe. And also over here, I think they're king of the north, the green pepper. There's only actually one coming right now. But I'm pretty excited about the eggplant because that is something I have never grown before. I didn't know how big they were going to get. But as you can see here, I've got an eggplant coming. And I did manage to get a pretty good harvest of strawberries and still I'm picking them on and off. Um, I was having an issue with some rodents getting in here. I think it was gophers and this little guy also tends to get in here and try and pick ones that aren't ready yet. But I covered it up with this bird netting that I got at the dollar store and that has really helped keep the pests away and I've been able to get a lot of strawberries this summer. Over here is my ground cherry. This is one of the things that I've never grown before and as you can see there's a pile of ground cherries coming. So my first question is to my viewers who are experts with ground cherries is when are they ready to pick? Do you wait for this shell to kind of dry out and or what is the uh, the harvest time for these? So somebody can answer that for me in the comments that would be greatly appreciated. Nice little tomato ready to go. So this here is my cucamelon that I had started indoors from seed. I'd screw that and this lemon uh, cucumber also from seed. It has a few cucumbers here that are, I think about just about ready to pick. They're getting kind of a yellow color. So we're gonna try them out soon. But I really thought this was fun to grow. There's lots of baby cucamelons on here now. So we've tasted a few of these cucamelons. They have a bit of a, Kind of a lemony cucumber taste, I think. And I think they would make great little pickles. So I'm gonna try and see if I can get a, enough to fill a small jar or two and make some cucumber and pickles. Ah! I've been doing some harvesting of my turnips, carrots, beets, and uh, they're coming along good. So here are all my squashes that I'm thinking have been doing really well. They've grown really good. I've had quite a few zucchinis come off my zucchini plant here. I've had a couple of these sunburst type ones or the patty pans. We've eaten a couple of those. So those have been good. This over here is my Burgess squash and I cannot seem to get any of these female flowers to pollinate I had a whole batch of male flowers here in the last few days and then couldn't find any females to try and help pollinate. Except for this one. Looked like it was going to bloom. It's a female. I took the male flower that I found and just kind of rammed it in there. So I'm hoping this one will pollinate. 
So you can see what's happening is none of the females are pollinating and they're just rotting. So again, this is one of my questions from my viewers. If there's any squash experts out there, if you have any tips and tricks about pollinating. I see a lot of bees around here. I'm not sure why bees aren't getting pollinated. So this here is my sweet dumpling squash. And it's a beautiful plant. It's loaded up with male blooms again that just bloom and die, bloom and die. <laughs> and I have not seen any females on here yet. So just not sure what to expect or if I'm doing something wrong again or how I can uh, ensure I get some squashes off this plant this year. My potatoes that I grew in containers under straw are all doing really well. They're starting to turn yellow. They have bloomed a few weeks ago. I'm just going to try to let them go as long as I can before I start doing a harvest. I'm hoping that we will get a nice harvest out of these. These are fingerling type potatoes that I grew here. French fingerling, I believe they were called. So stay tuned. We'll be doing a uh, harvesting video of these container potatoes, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. So next we'll head over and check out my corn. I've had a few videos on this. This is corn that I grew in containers. A couple weeks ago, I did some pollinating to help them along. Shook some of the pollen off of these tassels here and sprinkled them into all the silks that I could find. So we're gonna see now if these uh, fill out and we get some Cobb's corn going here. So hopefully that will come here in the next couple weeks. You can see the corn is kind of starting to die out, so I'm assuming that's a sign that it's nearing its end of life here for the summer, and hopefully we're going to get a bit of a corn feast. So we are at the uh, first few days of August here. So in Zone 3, where I live here, we only have about, you know, a month to six weeks before... The, uh, September or the first frost of the fall can hit us so you know you never know how early it can happen I've had it a killer frost come right at the end of August I think last year we were lucky to bake it to about mid-September without getting a hard frost so like I said we're in the home stretch this is all my potatoes that I have started under straw using the roost out method they were really slow to uh, germinate and poke through the uh, hay, or the straw, I should say. I have these growing under pea straw, but they're really coming along good now. They've all bloomed pretty much, and we're gonna start looking for some potatoes here, hopefully in the next week or so. Beans, cucumbers doing great here in the containers. My bush beans, as you can see, are producing a lot of beans. We got a take a harvest here in the next day or two and have our first bean harvest. This should be something that Henderson should be able to help me with. And the pole beans are coming along nicely. We got some regular Kentucky blue and some purple pole beans coming here. You can see I've got onions planted all along in with my cucumbers. And I got some sweet onions and some walla wallas. I'm hoping that they will bulb up pretty good. It's getting to be quite a jungle here with all my cucumbers. So most of the cucumbers that I planted this year were the ones that only have female flowers, so they don't need to be pollinated. Parthenogenic, I believe is the word. I have a few varieties. I usually grow these indoors because they're easy to grow indoors because they don't need pollination. And yeah, we've had 
some good harvests of some little cucumbers off of each of these plants so far. So these are my two baby Romas that I kind of thought by the name that they weren't going to get that big, but they are actually a indeterminate variety of tomato. They are getting quite tall. My little stakes that I used aren't quite strong enough, but as you can see, I got a lot of uh, fruit coming here, so that's exciting. I also planted a lot of onions around these tomatoes just to use up some of this space. They're all coming good. So I have a few varieties of tomatoes going here. This one here is my most favorite kind of tomato. It's the Sun Gold Cherry, and this poor tomato has been through a lot this year. When we had a late frost this spring, I had everything covered, including this one, and for some reason it got hit hard with frost. I didn't think it was going to come back, but look at it now. It looks really good. And then the wind came along a couple weeks over, ago and snapped it and broke off one of the branches. But I was able to secure it here with little pieces of t-shirt that I cut into strips. I've got it well secured against this uh, cattle fence here. It's starting to shoot out some fruit finally, so I'm very excited. I'm hoping that I can get a lot of those sun gold cherries. These are also a dwarf variety of yellow cherries that I had grown indoors on my in my arrow garden and had a really good harvest of them. I'll probably grow them again indoors because they're such a nice small version um, of tomato to grow indoors. This indeterminate is called the ping pong cherry. I guess these tomatoes are supposed to be about the size of a ping pong ball. Um, they're pretty good size as well so this one's doing good. I want to try to zoom you into this determinant um, roadster tomato. These were seeds I got from one of my friends on YouTube in a seed exchange. And I'm just disappointed because I have a really bad issue with the blossom end rot with these. Now I know that the cause is inconsistent watering, which means then the plant can't get sufficient calcium. but just really frustrated because I have faithfully watered my tomatoes every day. They've gotten lots of good rain and yet this particular plant, every tomato that comes through, I'm still eating them but you know I'm just not sure why this particular one isn't uh, isn't doing as well. Also in the middle here I have a beef steak it's starting to uh, shoot out some decent sized tomatoes. I had a lot of leaf curl on this one. We had a really hot spell here for a couple weeks and I'm not sure if that's what caused it but uh, still seems to be producing. This is another indeterminate variety called the Palestinian tomato. As you can see they're kind of a ugly looking thing but I'm hoping to get a few more of them. And I plant some herbs some parsley and basil and a few carrots in the empty spaces here so they're starting to come along as well. So the last variety I'm just going to show you here is the Thomasell tomato and it produces a white colored tomato which is something I've never grown before. Again I got these seeds through a seed exchange and I'm kind of anxious to see what they turn out like. It's kind of gotten a huge heavy stalk. I'm just going to try to secure it here with some of this. I kind of have gotten a little bit slack with my pruning. <laughs> I always start out with good intentions and keep the bottoms, you know, trim so that there's good airflow and try to get rid of the suckers and and then all of a sudden it just seems to get away on you. But maybe I'll get working on it this weekend. That's pretty much it for all the tomato plants that I have going here. I do have a couple going in grow bags over there behind the ground cherries. We've only been able to have a few small ripe ones so far. I'm very excited to, to have some more coming hopefully in the next couple weeks. 
So that's pretty much it for my garden tour. I don't have a huge garden, as you can see, but I like to have a lot of different things going. I like to try different things. And I really hope I can get some advice from some other experts out there on some of these questions and problems that I am having with some of my plants. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on future videos coming to the channel. Thanks for watching. Happy gardening.